Well, hello everyone. Thank you once again for joining me today. Um, I thought I'd change things up a little bit as I have this little girl with me who I believe really misses her sister. Um, so pardon me if she gets a little disruptive. She's usually extremely quiet, but some days she hears something outside and just wants to start barking. So just thought I'd kind of talk a little bit about her um, as we get started. So friends, it's really nice to be with you once again. Um, I thought to change things up and have you join me for tea today. Um, I hope you are all doing well. I am and I live in thankfulness each day for my spiritual communities and those in my life who show me genuine love each day. You know who you are and though my quiet nature may capture the best of me sometimes, I appreciate you, even if I don't reach out as often as I would like to. So the well-known verse, John 14, 1, says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. And this is the one placed upon my heart this morning as God's breath met mine. The life he breathed into me as I woke up appeared as symbols of music with lyrics containing John's writings. Personally, I am at peace at this moment, but felt he wanted me to say these very words to you. So friends, no matter what you are up against right now, do not be troubled. Jesus prepares a place at his table each day for us to dwell in him, to have tea, me, or perhaps coffee, you. He gives us vital reasons to simply reside in his presence. Through his instructions, our windows become clear to peep into his heavenly world at his ultimate table, to experience joy at every moment. You know, friends, the past 10 days, I have sat at his table every chance permitted. I wanted to be more in his presence because I was in need to go deeper based on some of the plans our Father has for me. Recently, I have shared with close friends and how exhausting life has been for me during the last leg of my education. At one point, I thought it was simply uh, my occasional chronic fatigue syndrome, which sometimes creeps up on me unexpectedly. But this has been different. I've been feeling for some time now, God saw something quite different than me in my current life. And, it's, and in sitting at the table of our King, my answers came. Though there are some gray areas still, the fog is slowly dissipating. I invite you to read about these plans in my blog from last week, and I've included the link in the description section of this video. Let's just say they include lecturing, researching, and teaching even more. I'm truly excited. So with that, I've decided to discuss in a two-part series, Instructors of the Bible. Instructors or Kadekis of the Old Testament were people who taught others the ethics of divine truth. When we look at Abraham in Exodus 12, 26, he was coached by God to become an instructor over his home to explain what the Passover ceremony meant. In essence, it was important to God that every person in Abraham's home was catechized. Priests and Levites were also instructors. The school designed for most prophets 
primarily focused was to teach and instruct young men called to serve God. Moving to the New Testament, instructors taught people about the Christian faith, much like uh, seminaries and other Christian um, universities today. The word catechist originated from to instruct, but may also mean to answer. Catechist may also mean to echo. Now think of the vespers of monks, priests, and other Christian uh, establishments here. So it has been written, this word catechist was originally used to describe the affirmation of rushing water on sea vessels as music falling into the sea. The sound of water is always comforting to so many. I know it is for me. When one learns, I contend, the process should likewise be just as soothing in the teaching process. It seemed good to me also having followed all things closely for some time past to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, that you may have certainty concerning the things you have been taught. Luke, a physician, received training to carry out his duties well. The most excellent and thorough writer he was, took it upon himself to teach the friends of God, us, through his eloquent, eloquent inscriptions. He wanted to make retention of our King most prevalent. Luke 1, 3, and 4. Christ commanded his disciples to go out to the world and teach and to instruct. Matthew 28, 18, 20. To follow his footsteps as the master teacher. Matthew 16, 13. He continues to be the unfailing and persevering teacher. He makes learning soothing, as I've shared earlier. He teaches the right way, Isaiah 28, 26. Then we look at the Pharisees. Oh, the Pharisees. They were something, weren't they? What's so amazing is we still have some in our circles holding these characteristics sometimes quite challenging. But when we look at Pharisaic law, it's important to note these teachers were so different based on their schools of thought. They existed during the time of the Second Temple and after its destruction, this group of scribes and sages took over and man did they take over jesus called them snakes murderers and hypocrites what some people are occasionally baffled about since jesus himself was called rabbi meaning teacher he was himself a jew he went to synagogue on sabbath and this is in luke 4:16 and wore blue tassels, four blue tassels on the four corners of his robe. He, God, recited the Shema. Hear, O Israel, God is one. He believed in immersion in water at baptism, as the Jews did. He celebrated the Passover Seder. And um, this is in Luke 22, 8 and other areas. He also celebrated the Pentecost and Sukkot and told his disciples to do the same. Acts 2.1 So following the first sake custom of the Habura, he formed around himself a group of 12, Mark 3.13.19, with himself as Rabbi, John 1.3.8. 
Now, if he followed all of these customs, then why did the stain for the Pharisees as instructors, right? Clearly, he was not anti-Jewish either. So join me next week as I get into the nitty-gritty pertaining to Pharisaic law as methods or perhaps not methods of instruction. I promise you guys, it will be quite interesting. It was for me when I researched. I really, really do. So next week, I'll also offer you information on how you can start an online business to teach what you know through online instruction. And I'll also include a free download created by me, something that I'm currently working on. So join us here, won't you? And until then, friends, if you find these topics interesting, gather right here in this community. Why not? And you can do that by what? By subscribing to it. But if you just visit occasionally to listen, that's cool too. I'm not putting any pressure on you guys. Just visit whenever you can. Now, have a magnificent week, friends. And I'll see you soon. As always, be peace and be blessed. Bye for now. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.